We all know when we're feeling tired, but do you know what I find really hard? Knowing how fatigued I am or how really tired I might become after a long day of flying. And it's fatigue that can affect the safety of our flights. We're going to talk about that today in our decision making debrief. Hello there. So we're talking about fatigue. We know we shouldn't fly fatigued, but how do we make that judgment call? Before we go any further, a big caveat here. I'm not an expert in fatigue. I'm just your average guy flying a PA-28 around the UK and Europe. And I'm simply sharing my thoughts and experiences on this issue with you to perhaps prompt you to think a bit about this issue for yourself. So here's a real example that we'll debrief today. Back in 2021, I wanted to get up to Perth in Scotland from my base at Red Hill for some filming. But the early morning murk at Red Hill had taken quite a long time to clear. I'd been sat at the airfield for about two hours waiting for the promised VMC to arrive. This flight was quite a long time ago, so I can't remember the exact details precisely. But knowing me, I probably hadn't slept too well the night before. That's because this will have been a trip I was excited to undertake, a real outing in the Arrow, in fact, an aeroplane I hadn't had for very long. And generally, before an exciting trip like this, it can take me a while to drop off. I had slept, but I just hadn't got quite the eight hours beauty sleep we'd all prefer to have. I'd probably woken up early as well to complete the flight planning I'd already begun the day before to check the weather, the NOTAMs, and brief the instrument procedures and so on. So I departed Red Hill on what was going to be a long flight, nearly three hours breaks to breaks. It was marginal VMC as I set off, low cloud and less than perfect visibility, and I knew I was going to have to climb and fly IFR for the first portion of the trip. I was pretty current at instrument flying at the time, about a couple of hours of it was logged in the month or so before this flight, and so I confidently climbed into the cloud. But I'd only had this aeroplane a couple of weeks and I was still getting used to flying it. This increased the workload and stress. You can see and hear that I'm pretty maxed out. I'm hunched forward in my seat and visibly quite tense. I've got a terrible, a terrible case of the leans at the moment, one, two, three, which I'm having to uh, completely ignore. The leans, by the way, is a common sensory illusion that if not recognised can cause a pilot to lose control of the aeroplane. So it's all going on today and I am working hard. The tops of these little bits of cumulus here are a bit bumpy. It was quite some time, probably 30 minutes or more, before I was able to climb out on top of the clouds. And when I did, you can see that I'm visibly relieved. I can finally adjust my seat too, which was poorly positioned and had contributed to the physical discomfort. Ah, oh dear, right, here we are. We're in the cruise. Thank goodness for that. That was hard work. <laughs> I remember realising as I closed in on my destination, having descended into VMC, that I was getting tired. I could tell that I wasn't flying as accurately as I would like to, and my radio telephony was suffering as well. Golf Bravo Mike India Victor, PA28 Arrow, Red Hill to Perth, VFR, 124, correction, 24 miles to the southeast of Lucas, altitude, one, uh, correction, 2,900 feet, 1004. When I landed at Perth, I came down with a bit of a bump and I wasn't really using my rudder accurately enough to line me up in that slight crosswind. Safely down, but it's obvious my performance wasn't at its best. I'd just flown for nearly three hours, hand flying a considerable portion of the journey in hard IMC. I'd not slept particularly well, suffered a long delay before departure and was flying an aeroplane I'd only had for a couple of weeks. So much so, I hadn't adjusted my seat very well and thus had been in some discomfort. That's quite a lot of factors, and I think it's probably fair to say that I was suffering from some fatigue by the time I reached my destination. So what can we take away from this example? Well, first up, I don't think I'd do a long three-hour drive in my car without taking a couple of stops for a comfort break and to stretch my legs. So why did I think it was a good idea to do it in an aeroplane? Perhaps scheduling a stop or two en route would have been wise, particularly as I knew the workload in the first half of this flight was going to be high. In terms of stress, I'm usually a good judge of when there's too much going on in life or at work, 
and I've been quick in the past to cancel flying plans in such circumstances. What I don't find so easy though is judging if I've had enough sleep and drawing a hard line if I'm not properly rested. We all know our own bodies, and I know from my time working shifts at the BBC or having to pull an all-nighter on election night or during a breaking news story, I can keep going when I need to. Everyone's different too, aren't they? Some people manage on six hours sleep a night, others need more. But then we also know from our flight training and studies that for each hour of sleep we get, we can generally expect to be able to manage two hours of optimal activity. So that's probably a good starting point, but I'm not sure a simple calculation like that is the whole story. Would you cancel a flight, for instance, because you'd only had six hours sleep rather than eight? Maybe you would. I don't think I'd immediately see a red flag there. What I think I would do is weigh up all the factors before making a judgment. So in future, if I'm faced with poor sleep before a long day of flying while at the same time lacking recency or currency or flying an unfamiliar aircraft, on top of a flight in hard IMC and a long delay before departure, then I think we're starting to see some red flags. Sleep is important, but it isn't the whole story, is it? Had this been a one hour bimble in Cavo case skies, then we wouldn't be talking about it today. It was the complexity and length of this mission on top of a bit of a disturbed night's sleep that caused me problems. My failure to recognise this hazard was a real wake-up call for me, and debriefing this flight with you today has helped remind me that I should always stop before my flights and run through that I'm safe checklist. The next free safety workshop from Astral Aviation Consulting is at 7.30 British Summer Time on Wednesday the 31st of July. These workshops happen over Zoom and they're a great way to brush up on the latest safety advice and good practice. To see what the workshop is covering and to register for free, visit astralaviationconsulting.com. I'll be back next month with another decision-making debrief. Bye for now.